Have you ever wondered how a smaller, outnumbered army can hold off a larger force? The Battle of Uhud provides a compelling answer. As the battle commenced, the Muslim army, though outnumbered, stood firm. Their courage and determination were unwavering, even in the face of adversity. They were like a resilient wall, steadfast and unyielding. The Quraysh forces, superior in numbers, launched their initial assaults, but the Muslim army did not falter. The Muslim forces, under the strategic leadership of Prophet Muhammad, remained steadfast, meeting the enemy head on. They managed to hold their positions, effectively thwarting the advances of the Quraysh forces. Each wave of attack was met with a counterattack, a dance of strategy and bravery playing out on the battlefield. In the face of these daunting odds, the Muslim army held their ground. They were not just fighters, they were defenders, protectors of their faith and their community. The battlefield was not merely a piece of land, it was a testament to their resolve, a symbol of their unwavering faith. But what role did strategy play in this initial success? Was it just the courage and determination of the Muslim soldiers, or was there a strategic mastermind at work? As we delve deeper into the Battle of Uhud, we will uncover the fascinating interplay of strategy and courage that marked the onset of this historic battle. The Battle of Uhud wasn't just about raw courage, it was also a testament to strategic brilliance. Now let's delve into the tactical aspect of this battle. Prophet Muhammad, a master of strategy, knew the importance of a well-protected rear guard. To safeguard his forces from any potential flanking maneuvers by the Quraysh cavalry, he assigned a group of archers to a strategic position on the slopes of Mount Uhud. This position wasn't chosen randomly. It was a calculated move that offered a vantage point, allowing the archers to monitor and control the battlefield effectively. These brave archers were the eyes and ears of the Muslim army, and their role was absolutely crucial. They were the guardians of the rear, the keepers of the Muslim army's security. Their task was simple yet vital. Stay put and hold their ground, come what may. Their bows and arrows were their tools, their courage, their armor, and their faith, their guiding light. This position was more than just a spot on a hill. It was a responsibility, a trust bestowed upon them by none other than Prophet Muhammad himself. In the grand scheme of the battle, these archers held a role of paramount importance. They were the protective wall, the safeguard against unexpected attacks. Their position was a testament to the strategic brilliance that marked the Battle of Uhud. But as we'll soon see, even the best laid plans can come undone. What happens when discipline breaks down in the heat of battle? Well, in the Battle of Uhud, the answer to that question was etched in the sands of time. A group of Muslim archers stationed on the slopes of Mount Uhud had been given explicit instructions by Prophet Muhammad to hold their position. Their role was vital, protecting the Muslim army's rear from any potential flanking maneuvers by the Quraysh cavalry. But as the Quraysh forces began to retreat, a vision of victory flashed before the eyes of these archers. The spoils of war lay scattered on the battlefield, tempting them with its allure. Ignoring the Prophet's orders, some of them abandoned their post, drawn by the promise of easy plunder. This disobedience, however, came at a heavy cost. Seeing the hill largely unguarded, Khalid Ibn al-Walid, a skilled military commander of the Quraysh forces, seized the opportunity. Leading a swift and unexpected attack from the rear, he turned the tide of the battle. The Muslim ranks, caught off guard, were plunged into confusion. The once orderly lines disintegrated, replaced by a scene of chaos and disarray. The momentum they had built up until that moment was disrupted, leading to casualties and a temporary retreat from the battlefield. The battlefield is a mirror, reflecting the best and worst of those who step onto it. The archers, in their haste for worldly gains, had forgotten their duty. Their disobedience had opened the door for a counter-attack that threatened to turn a near victory into a defeat. But amidst the chaos and setback, it's the mark of a true leader to rise up and rally his forces, to bring order from disorder, to instill hope amidst despair. This was the moment for such leadership to shine, to turn the tide once again, in a blink, Victory seemed to slip away, but how does a true leader respond in the face of such chaos? 
The answer to that question lies in the actions of Prophet Muhammad, which we will explore in the next scene. In the midst of chaos and setback, a leader's resolve is truly tested. As the Battle of Uhud took an unexpected turn, the Muslim army found itself in disarray. The Quraysh forces had seized an unforeseen advantage and confusion reigned among the Muslim ranks. Yet in the heart of this chaos, one figure remained steadfast, Prophet Muhammad. His leadership was put to the ultimate test. With the momentum of the battle disrupted and his soldiers scattered, Prophet Muhammad had to rally his companions and restore order. And he did so with a calmness and strategic thinking that truly embodies exemplary leadership. In the face of adversity, Prophet Muhammad did not show panic or despair. Instead, he displayed an unwavering calmness that radiated assurance and hope. His demeanor was a beacon of stability amidst the storm, inspiring his companions to regroup and face the challenge head on. Prophet Muhammad's strategic decisions were also pivotal in preventing a complete collapse of the Muslim forces. Understanding the gravity of the situation, he made quick and decisive moves to restore order in the ranks. He rallied his companions, reminding them of their faith and their duty, instilling in them the courage to stand their ground. The Prophet's leadership was not just about making decisions in the heat of the battle, it was about inspiring his companions to rise above their fears, to stand firm in the face of adversity, and to remember the greater purpose they were fighting for. His words and actions served as a rallying cry, a beacon of hope that helped restore order and prevented a total defeat. In the Battle of Uhud, Prophet Muhammad's leadership shone through the chaos. His calm demeanor, strategic decisions, and the ability to rally his companions in the face of adversity prevented the Muslim army from collapsing under the weight of unexpected setbacks. It's a testament to his leadership that, despite the sudden turn of events, the Muslim forces managed to regroup and stand their ground. Leadership in adversity can indeed change the course of events, but how did the Battle of Uohudi conclude? The answer to that question takes us to the final chapter of this historic battle. Stay tuned. Every battle has an end, but not every end is decisive. As the dust began to settle on the battlefield of Uhud, it was clear that this clash of faith and power was drawing to a close, yet the outcome was anything but clear-cut. The Quraysh forces, despite their superior numbers and initial advantage, couldn't seize a decisive victory. They had hoped to exploit the confusion within the Muslim ranks, but were unable to capitalize fully on this opportunity. The Quraysh, having exhausted their resources in a battle that was far more challenging than they had anticipated, found themselves having to withdraw from the battlefield. The toll of the battle was heavy, the cost of victory too steep, and the taste of triumph too elusive. So they retreated, leaving behind a battlefield echoing with the sounds of a conflict that was fierce, yet inconclusive. On the other side, the Muslim army, though shaken and battered, was far from broken. There was a resilience in their spirit, a determination in their hearts that refused to accept defeat. Despite the surprise attack that had thrown them into disarray, they managed to regroup under the steadfast leadership of Prophet Muhammad. As the Prophet's words of wisdom and courage echoed through the ranks, the Muslim warriors found the strength to retreat in an organized manner. They made their way back to Medina, carrying with them not just the physical wounds of battle, but also the weight of a hard-learned lesson. They had tasted the bitterness of chaos and the pain of disobedience, but they had also experienced the power of unity, the strength of leadership, and the importance of strategy. The Battle of Uhud may not have had a clear victor, but it left behind invaluable lessons. Courage, strategy, discipline, leadership, these are the threads that weave the fabric of history. A battle's end may not always be clear, but its lessons echo through time, shaping future battles and sculpting the course of history. That's the legacy of the Battle of Uhud, a testament to the indomitable spirit of those who fought, and a reminder of the timeless lessons it bestowed upon us.